Today on Sports Betting Truth, we're actually going to learn the truth about living in Las Vegas and expectation versus reality. Now, I'm sure a lot of people wonder what it's like to live in Las Vegas. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking about moving there someday, you know, and people want some information. And I feel like a lot of the videos that I've seen on YouTube about living in Las Vegas are geared more towards tourists rather than people actually want to live here as a local. So that's what this video is all going to be about. I have lived here twice in my life. This is my second time to live in Las Vegas. So I feel like I've learned a thing or two about living here. So without any more time wasting, let's get into it. So first, I'm going to start with what my average day is like living in Las Vegas. Keyword average. I like to run on Saturdays, so I usually get up early to run because you have to do that here in Las Vegas, especially in the warmer months. Otherwise, it'll just be too hot. Or you could run at night when it's dark, but those are really your choices. Unless you like running in 115 degree weather. I, I don't, so. If you plan on doing any kind of distance running like I do, you're going to need one of these hydration backpacks. Cause you know, I run like 10 Ks and stuff like that. And... So there's a lot of good places in the area to run at. You have a lot of parks, uh, but I like to run, you know, through streets and stuff. So now I used to go to the strip to run every Saturday morning, but two reasons I don't do that anymore. One is I had an incident and two, it just smells like weed up and down the entire strip because just everybody is on the strip smoking weed and it's gross. And I'd rather not smell that while I'm running. So. Most mornings I go to Red Rock because it's really close and I like being able to run around the neighborhoods in the area around the Red Rock Casino, a lot of good running. But today I'm actually mixing it up a little bit and going to St. Rose Parkway in Henderson because they have a good trail system on St. Rose Parkway, mile markers, everything like that. Aw oh, crap, I missed the exit to St. Rose Parkway. The M is one of my favorite locals casinos in the city, and it's uh, where I park when I run on St. Rose Parkway just because it's a good starting point. But if you're looking for a good view of the Las Vegas Strip from a distance here, the top of the M garage is one of the best places for that in the entire city. Pretty good view, especially at night. Anyway, I'm about to go run a 10K up and down St. Rose Parkway, so I'll be back in about an hour. Ugh, man, that was brutal. The first three miles were easy. That was when I was going slightly downhill with the wind in my back. The other way, I was going uphill and the wind was gusting over 20 miles an hour and that was just, like I can handle uphills, but the wind made it hard and it wasn't just wind, it was blowing sand and dust everywhere. I have sand and dust all over my body. I just got a car wash yesterday. So at least I got under an hour. That's good despite the wind. So you can see the splits in the first three miles are pretty good, but then the, look at those splits in the five and six. Yeah, look at that elevation chart right there. You can see how it's going uphill. Look at how hazy it is. And look how fa fast that flag's blowing. But look how hazy it is out there. All that dust blowing around got all over me. All right, I need to go home and take a shower and get all the sand and dust off of me. Man, I think this dust is doing a number on the cell towers because I haven't had cell service in the last 30 minutes. Unfortunately, what you pay for in gas here in Las Vegas is closer to what you pay in California than it is in other states I've lived in, like Texas, Kentucky, or Iowa. I want to jump in the pool to get all this dirt and sand off me after running. Oh, hell no, that is freezing. That is freezing. Boring food, but it is what it is. When you have goals, when you have fitness goals, you gotta eat boring. Some whole grain pasta, some chicken breast, a little bit of margarine and Parmesan cheese, and then some garlic. Would I rather be eating at Giordano's or Nacho Daddy or something like that right now? Absolutely. But... So I'm back at my computer. I'm working on my baseball website, not my model. So this is uh, Mike Trout's page, and it has his overall batting stats and split stats. And what I'm going to do under this is create a play-by-play -play log that shows all of his at-bats this season, so you can see how that has gone as well, but it, it goes into a lot of detail here. Yeah, it's still pretty dusty out there. I'm uh, currently walking around the Red Rock right now. I do it about five days a week, and since I said this is gonna be an average day for me, I thought I'd show you what it's like for my average day, and I come here about five days a week, so this would be an average day for me. Even though I already ran six and a half miles today. It's still windy as hell, though. 
Man, my cell connection is out again. This never happens. But it's been out for like the last 15 minutes and it was out for about 45 minutes earlier. It's the uh, wind and the dust that's probably messing everything up. Walmart. Don't hate, don't hate that I'm at Walmart, guys. It is what it is. Prices at Walmart for groceries are unbeatable. If you wanna pay more for the same things you can buy at Walmart at some of the other grocery stores, go ahead. More boring food. What? I can't wait to try this. I cannot wait to try this. Usually on days where I work out hard and I'm tired, I usually take a nap for an hour or two. Not so much for the physical rest, but for the mental rest. That way I wake up and I'm ready to get something done. 6.30, I slept for three hours. I did not plan on sleeping that long. You know, as bad as the Rangers are, I still like to watch them, you know, especially when they're on. I don't always get them around here. Damn it, I was uh, doing some dishes before I was going to cook dinner and uh, I actually poured all my pork down the drain on accident. All right, I know I went to the grocery store earlier, but that's food for later in the week. I'm going to have to eat something else. I'm going to have to improvise here. I am making chicken fajitas. That's what I'm making. I saw these two tortillas left over from when I made quesadillas a while ago. It's not much, but I was able to keep it within my calorie target, so that's all good, that's all that matters. And also, first things first, I wanna see how this is. Well, it definitely smells like a blue bomb pop. You know, if you've watched my streams before, you've seen me create like power rankings for these. I think I have a new number one. I think that just to throw on peaches and cream. It's good. It, yeah, it tastes just like a bomb pop. Mm. You know, I don't play a lot of video games. It's very rare that I play video games before eight o'clock. Honestly, I have a Nintendo Switch and that's it. And I bought like three games for it the entire time I've had it. I just don't play a lot of video games, but when I do, it's more just to unwind, you know? It's something I do to kind of unwind after a productive day. If I didn't have a productive day, I'm not gonna be playing video games. But what am I playing? This is easily my most played game on the system. I made it to X rank in this game. So that is my average day. Obviously I didn't really do anything exciting, but like I said, this is my average day. It's not my above average day or exciting day. This is just like an average day. I just end the day usually by laying here on the couch and watching TV, like I said, just to unwind, you know, and then I go to bed. It's about 10, 15 right now. I usually go to bed around 10, 30. I'm an early to bed, early to rise guy. But um, yeah, if you're expecting like me to go out and hit the casinos and clubs and everything, no. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this boring average day because I admit it's going to be boring. So that's pretty much my average day here in Las Vegas. Nothing exciting, and that's what it is. A lot of people think that living in Las Vegas, you're always out partying, going to casinos, having a good time. No, it's like any other place you're going to live in. You have a day-to-day -day life, and if you want to do something a little bit more exciting every now and then, that's up to you, but that is my average day here. So let's get into the details about actually living here. First, I'm going to start off with housing. So first, I'm going to start with what I have the most expertise in, and that's apartments. There's a lot of apartments in this city, and the thing about apartments is that the closer you get to the strip, the worse and more seedy they're going to be. There's a lot of short-term apartments and uh, motels and stuff like that all around the strip. You want to stay away from that. So the the further you go out from the strip, the better the apartments are going to be. Now there's really two hot spots that I checked out when I moved here the second time for apartments, and one of them is on St. Rose Parkway. There are a ton of apartments lining St. Rose Parkway. You got Revolution, Aviator, Evolve, Dune, Empire, and more, all up and down St. Rose Parkway. That's a good place for apartments. And also the 215 corridor where I currently reside in the southwest part of the 215 freeway, you got 215, Mercer. Union, Eden, Elysian at Flamingo, and a ton of other options right there where the 
bottom southwest corner of the 215 goes through. There's a ton of apartments there as well. And I personally was going to move into Empire on St. Rose Parkway until the place where I live now countered with a concession that they were giving me even though I had a six month lease. So I went ahead and took them instead. So I live in Summerlin on the 215 corridor, just like I said. Now, there's also some higher end apartments over by the Red Rock uh, called Tanager and Constellation. Those are higher end apartments and you're gonna pay a premium. I think not so much on quality, but more of location just because they're right there by downtown Summerlin and everything else. And that is a desirable location in Summerlin to live. Now, the next step of the line is gonna be condos. Now, if you wanna live near the strip, and live in a place that's not a dump, you're probably gonna have to pick a high-rise condo. Now, the more popular condo options around the strip are Allure, Turnberry Towers, Turnberry Place, and Sky. Those are gonna be the big four, as well as Panorama Towers. Those are across the 15 freeway right across from city center. If you want the condo and townhouse lifestyle away from the strip, there's a development called Affinity right across from the Red Rock, and that is away from everything, but those are pretty expensive. I've looked at those before. Now, as far as houses are concerned, it's just like with apartments, the further you go away from the strip and city center, the better they're gonna be. Henderson and Summerlin are gonna be your suburb areas, so those are where you're gonna find the nicer uh, houses with the nicer neighborhoods and green lawns and nicer schools and everything like that. But there's also some new developments such as Southern Highlands, as well as Sky Canyon and other things like that that are growing north and south of Summerlin. Like with everything else, you get what you pay for. So my apartment is a two bedroom, uh, off the 215 and I picked a two bedroom so I could have a second bedroom for this studio but it's really nothing special if you want to take a look at this mini tour that I have right here it's just you got your kitchen which is kind of small I wish I had more counter space but there's a lot of space otherwise a lot of closet a lot of storage space way more storage space than I had in San Diego so it is what it is but this is always going to be a short term housing option for me. I only signed a six month lease, which is why there's still a lot of things I haven't taken out of storage. I still have some things wrapped up and didn't hang anything on the wall. This is always going to be short term for me. Now, moving on to the cost of living in Las Vegas, it's a lower cost of living place for the region. You know, it's comparable to Phoenix, but the main difference between here and Phoenix is that Phoenix might have slightly cheaper housing from what I've seen, but there's no income tax here in Las Vegas, which is a big plus. Utility bills, I haven't really had to pay anything extravagant, but then again, I haven't really lived here in the hot summer months, so I'm sure the air conditioning bills and electric bills go up in the summer, obviously, because it gets very hot here. Grocery prices are about what you're going to see anywhere else. It just depends on where you want a shop. The cost of housing, like I said, rents are pretty pretty low. Compared to San Diego, I pay about half of what I paid for my rent in San Diego, and I have more space and an extra bedroom and everything like that, so I think that's a big plus. But housing is getting more expensive, especially houses and rents too. Uh, things are getting a lot more competitive here, but that's just the nature of the housing market these days in May 2021. Everything's very competitive, so houses are going up. You have a bunch of people moving here from California paying cash way over asking price for houses is just driving everything up. So if I was going to buy a house here, I'd probably wait for a market correction before doing that because things are getting pretty out of control here, just like everywhere else in the country these days. Taxes wise, there's no income tax and sales tax is pretty average. You got to remember that the tourists bear a lot of the tax burden in Nevada, which is a good thing for the residents. So tax burden is very low, especially compared to California. So when it comes to food, uh, I wish I was a bit more of a connoisseur in this area, which I am. I do have experience with this. Trust me. It's just that, you know, when you're on a diet and you're trying to meet fitness goals, you can't really eat what you want. And that's just how it is. But I do have a lot of extensive experience with the restaurants in the area from a locals perspective. Now when it comes to quick service fast food restaurants, you have everything in the world. You have your McDonald's, Burger King's, blah, blah, blah. I will say this, Jack in the Box, there are more Jack in the Boxes per capita here than I think anywhere else in the country. You have Jack in the Boxes on every corner, which isn't a bad thing. I'm not going to hate on Jack in the Box, guys. I've been there many a times. You see me go there before on my streams and in my videos just like I'm showing you right now. And when it comes to other fast food restaurants, there's two uh, regional fast food chains I do wanna point out that I think are worth going to, and that's obviously In-N-Out Burgers, number one, that's a very good place to go. I'm a big fan. Just make sure you get your burgers and fries animal style, as well as Tommy's. Now, Original Tommy's is a great place that I've featured on this channel before as well. They have really good fast food burgers with chili on them that are 
really good. You know, fast food is what it is, but those are two regional chains that I think are worth going to. Now, when it comes to chain restaurants, I have no problem with chain restaurants, guys. I've said this on this channel before. You know, if I go to a chain, so be it. I don't, I don't get the hate for chain restaurants. I really don't. Now you have every chain restaurant imaginable here. I mean, you have your Chili's, Applebee's, you know, every chain restaurant pretty much exists here in Las Vegas. Now, when it comes to sit down restaurants that have more of a unique feel, I've mentioned many of them on this channel many times and I have my favorites and I'm gonna mention them again. So when it comes to Mexican food, I'm a big fan of Mexican food, although I like to cook it myself for the most part. But if I'm gonna go somewhere to get Mexican food and pay for it, I like to go to Juan's Flaming Fajitas, although it's pretty hard to get a reservation there these days because they require wet reservations it is what it is but they have a very good happy hour which is the main reason i go and i still think they have the best queso of anywhere i've ever been in terms of mexican restaurants now when it comes to pizza uh, i am first and foremost a giordano's lover they have the best chicago deep dish pizza in the country in my opinion and they have a couple locations here in las vegas including my favorite the one on charleston boulevard but if you're not in the mood for deep dish then there's a couple new york style places that i like to go to one of them is brooklyn's best they're very good however they are on the expensive side so if you're looking for new york pizza options it's a little bit more affordable i think napoli pizzeria is very good and they often have good carryout deals as well and you can get a good pizza for a low price when it comes to burgers you have a lot of good places to get burgers i think scenic brewing company has very good grass-fed sliders when it comes to burgers as well as grass-fed beef burgers as well as fat boy which is a hole in the wall place that has some locations here in the city they have very good burgers at very reasonable prices i am a big fan of fat boy now when it comes to chicken and wings there's a place that i love here that's called chicken shack and they're really expanding they're getting more and more locations not just here but i see them pop up in places like denver now they're like a hole in the wall wing joint that has really good breaded wings and actually pretty good fries too. Uh, this place has been a staple of mine since I first lived here in 2012. Now when it comes to breakfast, do you have a lot of options as well? Now I loved the Feast Buffet breakfast at the Red Rock at their buffet at the casino, but it's closed and it's been closed, so you can't go there right now. So if you're looking for another breakfast option, Hash House of Go Go has very good pancakes. Now, when it comes to buffets, when they reopen, if they reopen, my favorite was Studio B at the M. I feel like it was the best combination of quality and price. Awesome dessert bar, awesome prime rib, and they also have seafood nights on weekends. Now, steakhouses, I don't have much experience with. However, there is one I've been to called Herbs and Rye right behind Palace Station. It's pretty good and very good bang for your buck. It's also my cousin's favorite place to eat in the city, my cousin Ryan, so I had to make sure to shout that place out as well. And when it comes to the desserts, there's a lot of different options that I like. Nielsen's frozen custard might have the smoothest frozen custard I've ever had in my life. Concerning COVID-19. So smooth. And, and then you have a place north of the stratosphere called Love It Frozen Custard that's pretty good too, but they're cash only, just keep that in mind. And then if you're looking for ice cream, there's a place called Handle right here on Hualapai Way, not too far from where I live that has some pretty good ice cream that's homemade and it's very good. Now, even though it gets very hot here, I feel like Las Vegas has a lot of good outdoor activities to partake in. The obvious one that everyone's gonna talk about is gonna be Red Rock Canyon. And yes, that's a good place to hike, but if you're gonna go there in the summer months, just make sure you do it very early because it's gonna get very hot there very quick. So these videos I took in August, 2018, were taken at about five or six in the morning, very early before it got hot. You can also mountain bike there and camp there, but just remember it costs money to get in. You can't just show up there without having to pay to get through the gates. Another camping option that I've camped at personally that you've seen on this channel is Mount Charleston. It's a little bit of a drive. It's about an hour outside the city compared to Red Rock, only about 20 minute drive outside the city, but I think it's worth it. Also, it's at pretty high elevation, but it's a good place to camp. And even in the summer months, it gets pretty chilly overnight. And it's also a good place to hike, which I've done as well. But I had a good time camping there. Just keep in mind that it, at Red Rock Canyon and at Mount Charleston, you have no cell service there, which can be a good thing in my opinion. You get to kind of disconnect from the world, but just keep that in mind in case you run into trouble. You're not going to be able to call anybody. Now, when it comes to golf, I like playing golf, but I'm going to admit, I have never played golf in Las Vegas before. I golfed all the time when I lived in Texas and San Diego, but I just haven't done it here for different reasons. But I probably will someday. But trust me, guys, there's golf courses everywhere around here. Although golfing in the summer months probably isn't going to be fun because it's going to be so hot, but there's golf everywhere here. But I have been to Top Golf. It's expensive, guys, uh, so just keep that in mind. It's fun, but expensive. Now, when it comes to water sports, uh, Lake Mead's going to be it, guys. 
there's no beaches or anything like that here. There's really no rivers or anything like that. It's Lake Mead and that's it. So you can do a lot of things on Lake Mead. You can boat, you can jet ski, sea do, fish, whatever you want to do, you can do on Lake Mead. It's pretty big. Now, I don't have any experience boating or anything like that on Lake Mead, but there are some sandy beaches and you can also camp there. And personally, my Lake Mead experience that you've seen on this channel is I go to a place called Nelson's Landing, which is about an hour and 15 minutes south of the city. They have a lot of good places where you can cliff jump and just swim and have a good time, kayak, canoe, and all that stuff. Although it is kind of tough to get there, so make sure you bring a vehicle that can handle it. They do have water parks here, but honestly, as a connoisseur of water parks myself, I'm not really impressed with either the Wet n Wild or Cowabunga Bay here, but they are options in the summer. Now, when it comes to snow sports, there's really not a lot of options. You have Lake Tahoe, which is a longer drive than you'd expect. It takes a while to get to Lake Tahoe. I've done it. I drove there. The problem is that there's really no direct route from here to Reno. Now, it's 430 miles from here to Lake Tahoe, but there's really no direct highway that gets there. It's a twisty, turny, mostly one-lane road, and you're almost always going to be stuck behind a truck that's going well under the speed limit, so it just takes a while to get there. But I've made that drive, and you can get to Tahoe in about seven hours. And then you have Vail. You can get there in eight and a half if you want to. I've done it twice. Vail's a good place to ski, but it's eight and a half hour drive, and I always stay overnight in Grand Junction just so you don't have to pay that extra night of lodging in Vail. And then you have Park City, which is going to be your closest ski resort to here, about a five and a half hour drive from here to Salt Lake City. I've never been there to ski before, but that's going to be your closest option. Now, indoor activities, you know, you want to have some indoor activities when it gets hot. Well, my favorite indoor activity here is to do, take advantage of the bowling happy hours that they have at Red Rock and South Point. Both of them have good bowling alleys that have happy hours. So at Red Rock, after 11 o'clock, you get discounted games. And at South Point, between midnight and 8 a.m., they're a 24-hour bowling alley, unlike the Red Rock. You can get dollar games. At least that's how it used to be. I don't know if it's still like that, but I love to take advantage of the bowling happy hours. They have a pinball museum on Tropicana over behind MGM Graham, which is a good place to go to if you like pinball. Just bring a bunch of quarters. You're going to have a good time. I've been there before. It's a good place to unwind. And then you have the Shark Reef at Mandalay Bay. It's a good indoor aquarium. It definitely exceeded my expectations when I went there. They have an awesome... A tunnel that you can walk through as well as a really big shark tank with, that has an artificial shipwreck and a bunch of other aquariums as well. Now if you have kids keep this in mind you can use your shark reef ticket to get free admission to Mandalay Bay Beach which is probably the best pool of any casino here in Las Vegas. They have a wave pool and a lazy river there. It's a good place to go if you have kids. Now, gyms and exercise, this is always a very important thing for me, and finding a gym can be stressful every time I've moved, which I've done a lot. Here's your options here when it comes to gyms in Las Vegas. You're gonna see LVACs and EOS Fitnesses everywhere in the city. And here's the problem with those places. They have very low membership fees. When the monthly fee is that low, it's just gonna be crowded all the time, no matter what. And I'm not about that. I hate crowds. So my most important metric when it comes to a gym is the what I call the squat rack per capita. For example, if you have a really crowded gym but only three squat racks, you're almost never gonna be able to get one. So more squat racks is a big deal for me. And so personally, I would rather pay a little bit more for a membership at a gym that's you don't have to worry about crowds and stuff like that at. So my gym membership is at a hole in the wall gym. I pay about eight times as much as what you'd pay at LVAC or EOS, but I don't have to worry about crowds and I don't have to worry about waiting on equipment or anything like that. I mean, I can go at like four o'clock or five o'clock in the afternoon where other gyms are going to be packed and not have to worry about any of that. And I'd rather pay extra for that, but some people might not. You might be okay with paying just 10 bucks a month at LVAC and dealing with the crowds, but not me. Now they do have a lifetime fitness here and I do want to bring that up. It's right next to the Red Rock, but the problem is that's where I was a member at where I, when I lived in Texas and I only paid about a hundred dollars a month there, but here in Las Vegas, it's $210 a month. So it's twice as much much as what I paid for at a Lifetime Fitness in Texas, and I just don't think it's worth it. I don't. Now, when it comes to places to run, there's a lot of places to run. As you can see, I ran at St. Rose Parkway, but I do most of my running at uh, the Red Rock area, running in the neighborhoods and stuff around there. And there's a lot of parks you can run at. There's a lot of trails. A lot of people like to run on the strip, which I used to do, but I don't do that anymore just because I don't like the stench of weed everywhere. But Plenty of places to run, just make sure you're doing it early in the morning or at night in the summer months and make sure you have something to drink. Now speaking of the weather, obviously it gets very hot here in the summer months. It gets very hot. I'm pretty sure my feet have first degree burns. 
and it's also very dry. When I first moved here the second time, I had to buy a humidifier because I just couldn't handle the dryness. I would wake up at night and my throat would just be sandpaper. I'm acclimated to the dryness now. I don't have to run the humidifier anymore, but it's just something to keep in mind. It gets very dry here. You want to stay very hydrated. I drink about two to three of these a day, and that doesn't count like the hydration backpack or other sources of water that I use as well, like these right here. But a lot of people think that in Las Vegas, because it gets so hot, that it has good weather all year round. That's actually not the case. It can get pretty chilly here in the winter months. I mean, it's not going to get cold like in winter climates, but you know, you'll see snow on the mountains and stuff like that. It can get into the 30s. And it also gets windy here a lot, so you're going to deal with wind chills. So don't think that, you know, in January and February, you can do a lot of outdoor activities and golf and everything like that. You're still going to deal with the elements. But the one thing it doesn't really do here much is rain. But when it does rain, things are prone to flooding, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's talk about grocery stores. Now, I already talked about where I grocery shop on the Average Day video, and you have a lot of options for grocery stores. I mean, you're going to have your Walmarts and Targets that you have in every city, but the other two non-Walmart and Target grocery stores here are going to be Smith's, which is pretty much the Kroger brand here. And then you have Albertsons there in a lot of places as well. And then you have your Costco and your Sam's Clubs and everything like that for bulk buying. But grocery stores here are like everywhere else. Uh, and the prices are in line with everywhere else I've been to as well. Let's talk about traffic. So traffic is a big deal. I mean, I've lived in cities with bad traffic like Seattle, Los Angeles, and San Diego. Horrible traffic. Now, this place isn't going to be traffic free. Now, there will be some bottlenecks here, but they're nothing compared to San Diego, Seattle, or Los Angeles. I mean, at I-15 North and 95 up by Summerlin Parkway, which is how people get to Summerlin on the I-15 freeway that runs parallel to the Strip. That can be a bottleneck at times, as you can see, as well as south, uh, where I-15 meets the 215 interchange. The 215 is how people get to Henderson and South Summerlin from I-15. That can be a bottleneck as well, especially in rush hour times, but it's nothing compared to those cities I've lived in like Seattle. It's nothing. So, However, there's a couple things I do want to mention. And one is that here in Las Vegas, compared to every other city I lived in, I feel like you spend more time waiting at red lights than anywhere else. And I noticed that when I first lived here in 2012 and the air conditioner went out in my car and, you know, being at a light was torture in the summer when I had no air conditioner. And it's still like that. I mean, compared to other cities, it's a lot of red light waiting. And another thing is that strip area traffic can get annoying on the weekends. You've watched my videos before. This sucks. But yeah, strip area traffic on the weekends, I would avoid it entirely. It is frustrating. It makes you want to pull your hair out. But apart from that, traffic really isn't too much of a problem here. It's just more of the red lights. So when it comes to nightlife and shopping, I'm not a club guy. I'm not someone who likes to go to bars and stuff like that. So I won't be an expert at that. You're going to have to defer to other people of that. But shopping, there's some outlet malls here that I think are pretty good. The ones uh, by downtown on the north side, I think are pretty nice. I think they're nicer than the outlet malls south by the south point but outlet malls there's a lot of shopping malls as well there's a lot of places to shop i mean this is a destination city for worldwide tours so there's going to be every level of shopping you can imagine but pretty much every store that you need is going to be here in las vegas one of my favorite places to go for shopping and stuff like that is a place called summerlin center it's pretty much the area around the red rock casino and there's a lot of stores and restaurants and everything like that and it's very walkable and it's nice a lot of palm tree lined streets green grass and everything like that that you won't see in other places in the city and that's one of the reasons I like to run around there uh, they have a place there called downtown Summerlin which isn't like a downtown but it's more just like a outdoor shopping area kind of like South Lake Town Square in the DFW area for those of you that have been there now sports this is a sports town and it was like that before any professional sports are here if you're a sports fan this is a very good place to be because there's a lot of neutral site games uh, for college sports and just it's a great place to be if you're a sports fan but professional sports is getting a foothold here obviously first and foremost the Knights uh, as of right now it's you can't really go to the games there though they only let in about 1500 fans and good luck getting a ticket for that but even if I could I wouldn't want to watch a game wearing a mask and anything like that no the Raiders as well uh, their momentum was kind of blunted because their first season here was the COVID season so people couldn't really go to their games either but the Raiders uh, a lot of stuff is popping up for them as well 
But I think this is a great place to be if you're a college sports fan. I mean, there's probably going to be a lot of neutral site college football games coming here in the upcoming years because of Allegiant Stadium. They want to put butts in the seats, as well as UNLV seems to get some good non-conference opponents. And there's going to be a bowl game here as well. But college basketball is a great place to be. If you're a college basketball fan, this place is awesome with all the neutral site games and tournaments here, conference tournaments, and then UNLV basketball. Hopefully, Kevin Kruger can turn them around and turn them back into a force. But I've been in the Mountain West tournament here before. I've been to the Pac-12 tournament. This is a great place to be if you're a college basketball fan. It really is no better place in my opinion. And I've lived in Louisville, Kentucky, which is the most highest rated college basketball market in the country when it comes to college basketball TV ratings, and I'd rather be here. And then you have a triple-A baseball team, the Las Vegas Aviators. I've never been to their ballpark before, but it's right across from the Red Rock, and it's in that Summerlin Center, downtown Summerlin area. And I just don't know how I would feel. I mean, I went to Texas Rangers and Fort Worth Cats games in the DFW area and with start time temperatures in the 110s, but that was I just don't know how I would feel about that for a minor league team. You know, it's one thing you're going to go see the Rangers in those temperatures, but it's another thing to do it for a minor league team. I don't know, but I've heard their ballpark is actually pretty nice. Now, the elephant in the room I have not got to yet is casinos and gambling. Now, let me tell you this. I don't play table games or video poker or blackjack or slot machines. I don't do any of that. The only gambling I do is sports betting. That's it. Now, once or twice a year, I will sit at a blackjack table or video poker, but it's very rare, and it's just like one of those things that I do. Uh, I've done it before at Four Queens. Every year, the night before college football starts, I like to play video poker. I mean, it's just one of those traditions, but I am a math guy. I am very very strong at statistics and I know that every single table game and everything slot machines are going to be heavily rigged against you so why even bother it's a losing proposition if you're a local you need to stay away from that stuff like I said for entertainment purposes only expect to lose and don't bet with any money you're not willing to lose those are rigged against you guys ignore everyone who says they have a system or whatever that can beat the casinos they can't However, if you do want to gamble and everything like that, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, just make sure it's for entertainment purposes and not to make money. Here are my four favorite local casinos. The Red Rock, Green Valley Ranch, the M, and the Palms. I would add South Point as a fifth, but it can get pretty crowded at times and it could be hard to access, but those are my top four. Now, obviously, as a local, you don't really find yourself going to the Strip a lot for a lot of reasons. Uh, for a long time, there's no free parking. The Strip traffic can be bad. And my biggest issue with the Strip these days is the fact that it just smells like weed everywhere. And it's gross. And that's why that's one of the main reasons I don't run there anymore. But it's just a conga line of people smoking weed. And that's all you smell on the Strip. And it's nasty. I'm sorry. Some people might like that, but I don't. But there's just too much hustle and bustle on the Strip. Too many, too many crowds. Too many people trying to hand out things. Things, too many homeless people and stuff like that it's just you can get your casino fixes elsewhere without having to deal with all that and that's why a lot of locals don't go to the strip and then you have downtown which I think it's not for everybody it's really not my scene but it's a lot more uh, rated R if the strip is rated PG then downtown's rated R I'm not saying it's like anything goes but it's definitely like if Think of like Bourbon Street in New Orleans. That's going to be this. That's going to be downtown. It has the same kind of vibe and everything. A lot more of a revelry atmosphere. But downtown, I don't really go there much either. I go there about once or twice a year max. But it is a little bit more local friendly. You're going to find better odds there. So don't don't hesitate to go there. And when I say odds, the less touristy places, the further away from the strip and everything like that, the better the odds are going to be for any game you do want to play. And I do want to say this, you know, I feel like the vibe of the city has been killed by COVID. Like I said, this is the second time I've lived here. And the first time I lived here, it, it felt like a completely different city in terms of the vibe and the atmosphere. But I just think COVID and the social distancing and the mask and everything is just destroyed this city in terms of the vibe. I mean, it's just not the same. And I'm sorry, that... that it's kind of killed the city for me. I used to like to just go to like casinos and stuff, not to bet or gamble, but just to kind of hang out and enjoy the atmosphere and vibe. And I don't do that anymore. I'm just not about the social distancing and masks and everything like that. I just feel like it kills the atmosphere and vibe. So I'm not going to be going back until all the restrictions are lifted because it's not, it's just not the same. It's just not as fun. So, you know, this is a sports betting channel and I haven't got to sports betting yet. And I talk about that all the time. So I'm just going to be brief here. 
Sports betting everywhere in the city, not hard to do it. If you want to bet on sports, you can. A lot of companies now are shifting over to apps, and I can see why it makes betting a lot easier and more accessible, and that can be good or bad. I mean, it's one thing to actually have money in your hand and actually have to go to a sports book and hand the money over and get a ticket and everything. Being able to bet on an app is a lot easier. I mean, with just one press of a button, you can make bets, and that can be dangerous for a lot of people who can't control their gambling. So if you're going to sign up for an app, just keep in mind that you can only bet within the state of Nevada, and there's no way to spoof your GPS or anything like that. So don't even bother. So if you feel like you can't control your impulses when it comes to sports betting, don't sign up for the app and just continue to bet the old-fashioned way where you have to cross a lot more hurdles to bet. But one thing that apps do benefit is that they have a lot more options that you can bet on the app that you can't bet over the counter so you can have some doors opened up for you as well such as team totals and baseball if you want more on sports betting in las vegas just watch the rest of this channel or just ask me questions i don't want to spend too much time on this video on sports betting because it's more about living here and then the last thing I want to talk about is the politics. Now, this might be the most libertarian live and let live city I've lived in. And I've lived in a lot of cities. I mean, there's cities I've lived in like Seattle where you get politics shoved down your throat every single day of the week. And then you have other places you live in like the North Texas area and the suburbs where politics aren't shoved down your throat, but they are prevalent. But here is like the most live and let live place I've ever lived in. And people are going to say Nevada is a blue state. And I think that's more because of the union membership here and less because of people's actually prevailing political attitudes. If you want to live in an apolitical city, this is your place. Like politics never comes up here. But I think that's a good thing because I'm a pretty libertarian live and let live person myself. And this place is great. You don't have to deal with any of that. So to wrap up this video, I'm going to come up with some reasons why you should move here and why you should not move here. So first of all, I'm going to say why you should not move here. Don't move here if you don't have a job lined up. This is a tough place to get a job. And with COVID and everything, there's a lot of people here that are unemployed and the job market is very competitive here. So if you don't have a job lined up here, I would not move here unless you have a pretty significant amount of savings. And not only is the job market here tough, but the higher paying jobs are more few and far between than in other cities. So I find that the higher paying jobs are also very competitive as well. Do not move here if you have any problem with gambling, drugs, alcohol, or any vices. This place is called Vice City for a reason, and these vices are very accessible. So if you have a gambling problem, if you can't control your drinking, if you have a problem with drugs, do not move here. Because, like I said, the vices are very easy to come by. Don't guys this place can ruin you don't move here if you want to come here and live like a tourist now a lot of people think they want to move here and live like a tourist and party and drink and gamble and ha go out all the time and everything like that i wouldn't move here if that's what you want your lifestyle to be because you'll burn out on it very quickly things like that are good in moderation and i think a lot of people get confused with living in a place they like to vacation at and living in a place where they want to live at like i lived in san diego a lot of people are like why do you hate living in san diego i like it every time i visit there there's a difference between visiting and living guys and so if you want to live here like you visit here that's not a good idea you're gonna burn out don't move here if you think you can turn gambling into an income source now i've met a lot of people here that moved here for the sole purpose of thinking they can make it gambling i moved here to make a living betting on sports i moved here to make a living playing advantage video poker i moved here to make a living using my roulette system i'm not kidding i met someone who said that i lived here to make a living counting cards at blackjack i lived here to make a living playing poker i've met dime a dozen people don't guys repeat after me you cannot make a full-time income gambling okay i'm not saying it's impossible but your odds are astronomical for every person who moves here to make it at poker who makes it you probably have a thousand people that don't for every person who moves here to make it as a sports better you probably have tens of thousands of people who don't. And then the people who move here to make it playing casino games, I mean, I don't even know how you can make it. Even if you're playing advantage video poker, or counting cards at blackjack, I mean, your margins are still gonna be so thin that I just don't see how you can make an income to sustain yourself. So guys, if you want to move here because you can think you can make it gambling, no matter what you're going to gamble on, don't. You're not going to be able to sustain yourself. Trust me. The odds are so stacked against you, even if you think you know what you're doing sports betting, even if you think you're a one-in-a-generation poker player. The only thing that I would probably not have a problem with would be poker. If you think you're good enough, maybe you might be able to make it as a poker player, but anything else, no. Don't move here if you can't handle the heat. 
If you can't handle high temperatures in the summer months, don't move here. It's a blast furnace. Trust me, guys, it gets very hot here. I lived here with a broken air conditioner in my car, and that was torture. So if you can't handle high temperatures, don't move here. Don't move here if you want accessible bodies of water. If you like beaches or lakes or rivers or anything like that, there's really only one lake here, and that's Lake Mead, and it's not really accessible. You have to drive a few ways out. It's not free to get to. You have to buy a pass to get in. So if you want easily accessible bodies of water to partake in summer water activities, this isn't your place. So those are some reasons not to move here. So what are some reasons to move here? Well, move here if you want to be a contributor to the city. And this could tie into reasons not to move here, but if you're not going to contribute to the city and just perpetuate the city's problems like, you know, drunkenness and drug use and everything like that, gambling addiction, don't move here for that. But if you want to be a positive contributor to the city, a taxpayer, you know, someone who contributes to the community and everything like that, yeah, move here. This is a good place for that. It really is. But if you're going to be like that person who I met at the Palms one time who is betting his unemployment checks on 18 MLB parlays, don't be that guy. Don't use taxpayer assistance to bet with. Just don't do that, guys. That's not what it's for. Move here if you want to have an endless amount of entertainment options. This is probably the best place to live if you want entertainment. Live entertainment, anything to entertain yourself, endless amount of options here. So if you like to spend your, you know, part of your budget on entertainment, this is a great place. Move here if you are a sports fan that can control your sports betting. If you are a sports fan, especially college basketball, but any sport really, this is the place to be. There is no better place, in my opinion, to be if you're a sports fan. With, with legal sports betting and all kinds of sporting events that happen here, there's just a great atmosphere here as a sports fan. As long as you don't have a problem with sports betting and sports gambling, this is a good place. Move here if you like low taxes and relatively low cost of living for the region. That's why I moved here from San Diego, because of the low cost of living, no income taxes. Your money goes a lot further here, although that is kind of counterbalanced by the fact that there's less higher paying jobs here. Still, if you can get a good job that you're satisfied with the income for, your dollar will go far here. Compared to other places in the region like California, this place is affordable. Move here if you like to live in an area that can be both urban and remote at the same time. So if you want, you know, a vibe of a city vibe, you can go to the strip downtown and stuff like that, but you're not too far away from it being remote and rural. That's what I like about living here is that I'm more of like a rural guy myself. I like to live out, you know, where there's less people and more open spaces, and I have that. But if I want to go somewhere where there's, you know, more people and more things to do, then that's not far away either. You have both within 15 minutes of each other. It takes 15 minutes from where I live to get to the strip, and then it takes 15 minutes where I live to get out of cell reception, no cell phone coverage out into the middle of nowhere. And I like that. I like having that option compared to San Diego where it felt like you had to drive a long way to get away from people and away from civilization. And then finally, move here if you want mostly good weather year round with a lot of out outdoor activities. Now, like I said, it can get pretty chilly in the winter months and in the summer months, there's no place hotter. But for the most part, the weather's pretty good. You're not going to worry about rain or snow or anything like that. If you can handle the heat and if you can handle the chilly, not freezing, but chilly temperatures in the winter, this is a great place when it comes to weather. Now, it's not California weather, but it's pretty good. I mean, you'll be able to golf most of the year. You'll be able to do things outside most of the year. So this, this is a good place for weather. And if you want to do something like ski or anything like that, you can hit some ski resorts like Tahoe, Vail, and Park City all on a single day's drive. So that wraps up this video, this 411, this 101 about living in Las Vegas, the truth about living in Las Vegas. I like it. I think it's a great place to live, but it's not for everybody. So keep everything I talk about in this video in mind. This is a great place to live and I am proud to call this place home for now. I mean, that might change, but for now, there is no place I would rather be than Las Vegas, Nevada. So that is the truth about living in Las Vegas. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned right here to Sports Betting Truth for more videos about Las Vegas and sports betting in general.